They hate when you elevate. The second up losses, I'm handing them out. Yeah, I had to go delegate. It feel like I'm flowing, I'm lost in the moment. I swear I could levitate. Hey guys, what's going on? Andy Elliott. I'm here today with a good brother of mine, Ben. Now, Ben is a savage. Benjamin here is an absolute killer. Um, he's been in the door to door industry forever. He has a crazy story. I've been coaching with you for like, what, an a-, a year, year and a half now? Yeah, about a year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half. And dude, like, um, I want to talk about two things. Number one, like, how you built what you built. And then number two, like, maybe some things that have happened since we got together. But the cool thing is, is you're 41 years old. I'm 44, right? You've been in the door to door space most of your life, right? You've been yep. in sales most of your life. I have a sales channel. Everybody's like, man, I want this next level of life. Some of the things that Ben's going to tell you today is going to help you, I think, get to the next level. You're going to see what he did. I think he can tell you some things that you did right, some things that you did wrong, and then ultimately, like, what your life looks like today and, like, how you can get there and then, like, what's next for you. But awesome. most importantly, man, Ben's a savage. I appreciate you, brother. Of course. I mean it. This guy's, like, got a heart of gold. He's got a beautiful family, and uh, there's just no limits with him. But uh, rock and roll, let it rip, man. Today, my audience is all yours. Great. Well, yeah, thanks again for the invite to come on and kind of talk about what, what I have done. I got my, my start in the door-to-door space right out of high school. So I was working with a company out of Utah, like all the other kids that grew up in Utah. That's where I grew up. Mm-hmm. Um, it was either pest control or alarms back then. There wasn't really anything else. And my scoutmaster's son had gone out and done, um, or his nephew had gone out and done pest control the summer before. That guy ended up founding... Um, one of the largest door-to-door companies. And so I, I did door-to-door sales with Moxie Pest Control mm-hmm. and did four or five years with them. Yeah. Left the space, got into construction. I kind of grew up in, in construction. My dad was a project manager for a big construction business. Got out of the door-to-door space and started a cabinet shop in 2007. Mm-hmm. Timed it perfectly with the housing crisis. So that crashed and burned. Found yeah. myself back in the door-to-door space. Um, would you say that um, you're going here and you're moving through your life, but would you say that sales, no matter what's going on in your life, anybody watching this right now, there's lots of people in lots of different jobs. Sure. But if you get into the sales industry, you'll notice, like, I got into this, then I went back to sales. This happened, then I got back to sales. So you went sales, construction, sales. Yeah. Right? Got into cabinet, back to sales. Yeah. Sales is, it- is always sitting right there. And, yeah, well, it's the most valuable more. asset you can have is learning mm-hmm. how to sell, like, regardless. Every business, you can have the best ideas in the world. Something I've learned as an entrepreneur, no matter how good your ideas are, if you don't have capital mm-hmm. and if you don't have sales, you just have a really good idea. Mm-hmm. And so those are the other two kind of caveats that are really super important. Ideas. ideas are great, but, you know, if yeah. you don't have capital and you don't have someone to go actually sell it and make that become a reality – you don't have anything. It's just a good idea, and it'll, it'll live and die with you. That's the truth. If you want to get capital, you get really good at sales because eventually at some point you have to make money to have some capital, which is, is easier yeah, to do Yeah, capital doesn't come to you unless you've built something of value, and then you'll have VCs reach out and say, hey, I love what you're doing. How yep. can we help? I'm yep. sure you get people all the time yep. like, Andy, we'd love to take you to that next level and invest yep. in this, but if you're really good at what you do, you don't necessarily need the capital because you can go create the capital yeah. through sales. And exactly. so. Um, so yeah, it was, it was valuable to have that, that skill set of learning how to sell. I did seven years on the doors, which is a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was never the killer on the doors that would go out and hit huge, huge numbers. I always made really good money, but I was more the Consistent. go get my three or four and call it a day and go hang out and enjoy my life. Looking back now, I wish I could, you know, I wish I would have been a little more savage when I was younger mm-hmm. and instilled the right discipline. Um, but knowing that about myself, obviously, as, a, as an owner, I can recognize myself in my in my guys and help them yeah. flip that switch. That. And so it's been good. But, yeah, I got uh, four or five years of, of door-to-door, got out in the construction space, ended up getting back into the door-to-door space for about two more summers. Um, at that point, I had got married, met my wife, Rocio, up in Salt Lake. Uh, we moved to San Diego, and we're going to live there full time. Ended up just staying there for one summer, left the space again, started selling butter, flavored butter, mm-hmm. um, for a, a neighbor who's had a little startup and was looking for that balance, right? And I didn't want to do door-to-door anymore. I wanted a real job um, and, and ended up selling gourmet flavored butter at like Sam's Club and Costco's. Like I'm wearing like a little microphone and mm. making great money. I was making four to five grand a week selling butter. That's great. Which was great. 
but again, like and you're still in sales, still in sales, right? And yeah, so I want everybody to hear that. Like you're still in sales, still in sales. And regardless of what you do, like sales is something you're always going to do. If you're a, you know, if you're a loan or if you're a loan officer, you still have to sell the people on what you're That's doing. Right. So sales, sales skills are number one, no matter what your job function is, you should always be studying sales and getting better at that. Amen. Um, but I got out of the butter thing was ended up back in Texas. I had moved to Texas to open up that division for the butter company. The butter company has since sold for like $70 million, had a great exit. And wow. I'm really proud of them. That's great. Um, but I got, I left them and left my equity on the table and went back into door to door because I needed to make the type of money I had made when I was younger. And you can make quick money. It's fast. Right. Yeah. Okay, I want everybody to know that too. You can make quick money. Like, you know, like you could be broke today and you can be like, dude, what am I going to do? And if you think about like, I go get a job, it could be like, oh, well in a year and a half I could get out of this. this I had a position. guy, I had a guy call me yesterday, right when I landed here, I got mm-hmm. over to the hotel and a guy that had worked for us for four years Hit me up yesterday. He'd left, gone, chased the solar money, and that's been up and down. Of course. Went into roofing, up and down, and long horizons on getting paid. It's like weeks yeah. to months, months to close deals. Yeah. So he called me yesterday. And he's just like, man, I got like got another baby due in a few weeks. I need to I need to make some quick money. Can I come out and sell for you? And I was like, start Monday. See you I on love Monday. that. And so having a good, you know, having those skills can serve you forever. And if you're ever in a bind, like, you can door go, to door is the fastest money you can make. Yeah, you can go make 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand 30 days. Like that. like that, yeah. You just go out and you just work. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's kind of where I went. And so I, I found myself in Texas, was working for the butter company, and it was just kind of like I need to make – at that point, the, the sales with the butter in, in Texas, we weren't in – Costco was always really, really good. Sam's Club was not as good. Mm-hmm. But Costco wouldn't open up that market to us. So we were, like, struggling you know, barely making our bills, barely like not saving, not being able to invest. And so, um, called up a buddy who I'd sold door to door with that first summer in 2001 and said, Hey, like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm here in Dallas. Like, I was like, you're kidding me. Like I live in Dallas. And he's like, well, come out and sell. So I went and sold that final summer, um, six weeks, you know, 200 accounts, something like that. Um, and then at the end of that summer, the owner was like, hey, why don't you come back in? Let's go full-time. Let's get you recruiting again. When I had left, I had left a pretty decent team at, at when I got out of door-to-door. He's like, let's just get going again. Let's start over and get you rolling. And I was like, no. Nah. And he's like, well, I need, oper- I need operators. You know what the sales side needs. Why don't you come in the operations side? So I was like, okay, that sounds good. I'd have that balance. I just had my second kid. Mm-hmm. And so excited to go do that. And so I ended up going out uh, – on the operation side as a service manager, just starting to learn, you know, the, the functions and the, mm-hmm. the duties and responsibilities of the, the operation side. And then the company sold. Wow. So he, he brought me on and like five weeks later sold the business. He already knew what was obviously going on. I didn't, but then he started another company. We kept the branch managers and service managers. I moved up to, um, Washington DC, opened the office up there. We had the number one office in the, in the company that year. Then I opened. I was promoted to branch manager the next year. Went to Baltimore, um, top three office. Moved to Atlanta, top three office. Then we sold that company. Hey there, sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals, and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not. There's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away and here's the best part andy's playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills there's something for everyone in this playbook so if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections close more deals and skyrocket your sales career don't hesitate click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's sales playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. 
And so at that point, I'd been through three different transactions in the door-to-door mm-hmm. -door space of building something up and seeing That's it sell. Right. Mm -hmm. Owners living in really nice houses. I was making good money, but I wasn't making owner money. Um, so when he sold the third business, I was like, you know, I need to start my own thing. Um, and we were told we were never selling the third business. Yeah. Why you know, did they tell so, you that? Yeah. Why would they tell you? Why would they tell you that? Yeah. Keep no, I'm you, just saying, yeah. Keep you working hard, right? Yeah. Keep you focused on building some yeah. value, which isn't bad. Like, and that's another thing as an owner, like that I now understand that when you're the owner and you're taking that risk and you're the one sometimes putting everything on, I know your story, you, you put everything on mattresses, you put everything on the line, selling your house yeah. and like you risk everything. And so there is, if you want to go risk everything, you can have that payday too. And that's kind of what I tell people at this point. Yeah, because like, there's hey, a lot of people that don't get it. Yeah. If you don't like it, go do it. Prove me wrong. You know, you can, you can understand what it's like when you're, when you're wearing that hat, but yeah. But yeah, I, I, uh, I, I left the company. They had started the fourth company at that point. I left. He ended up calling me up, the owner, and said, hey, what do I need to do to get you back over here? You know, we, we need you. We don't want you to leave. And so I was like, at that point, we had already ordered trucks for the new company. We were like pretty far down the path. So I was like, well, you got to pay back the investor. you got to buy all these trucks. you got to, like, X, Y, Z. He gave him a list of, like, 12 things. And he's like, okay, done. So I ended up going back to that company for the first summer. But I was miserable. I wasn't myself. I wasn't giving it my all. I still you felt I had like, that entrepreneurial fire. You felt like you gave it up. Just kept getting smothered, you know, by by the. It's called the gold. It's called the golden handcuff syndrome. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So anybody knows it's called the golden handcuff syndrome, and I just I want to explain it to you. It's where you have a dream and you want to go get it, but you're just handcuffed to a certain paycheck, or a certain opportunity, like that you're for sure of, and this thing that you're not for sure of, like you're afraid to leave the sure thing for the unsure. And so you're just handcuffed, especially when you have wife and kids. Yeah. You know, because, you know, you well, don't want to I was making the best go. money, like, you know, making 150 grand a year roughly yeah. consistently. And but you just don't want to, you don't want to let It was good. I down. bought a home. We had a beautiful home over in, in Georgia and life was good. Like we weren't. Yeah. I wasn't you were happy. super unhappy with my yeah. money or like my lifestyle. Yeah, but you had this felt itch. I had no purpose. It's an itch. Yeah. You have this itch. Yeah. We're like, you know what I mean? And then. So, we, call it, we call it gesture without motion. Yeah. Right? Like, I was going through the motions, but I didn't feel fulfilled at all. I was yeah. waking up with no fire. You had a hole in your heart. Yep. Yeah. And so I just wasn't putting in my all. And at the end of that first summer of the new company, I was like, you know, I need to go do my own thing. And I had called up my, my wife's cousin and said, hey, and my son was, my oldest son was, was doing T-ball. And, like, you know, goes for tryouts and has his glove on the wrong hand and I was never a baseball guy, so I called up my, my cousin's husband. Was like, "Can you teach him how to swing a bat?" Like, I suck at this. Like, I don't know. I can do football all day, but I never played baseball. Teach him how to hit a bat. And so he's like, "Yeah, let's let's do that. Bring him over." And he's like, "Hey, by the way, have you ever thought about starting your own company?" So at that point, he had started a satellite. Sorry, started a satellite company with his brother, and they were like the number one retailer in the southeast mm. for Direct TV. And That's great. Um, we were always talking business when we were getting together and he was like, have you ever thought about doing your own pest control thing? We have an investor who's, who's interested in investing in our company, but we want to do pest because pest control is more recurring, right? If you sell a satellite business, there might Facts. be a three or $4 drip, but it's not a recurring business that you own. Mm -hmm. So he's like, we want to do pest, but we know you've done it pretty well. And I was running about a 25, $30 million region at that point with That's the company great. I was with. And so I was like, well, yeah, if we had the money and we had the sales guys, I know how to do everything else, right? Yeah. I just, I need money and I need sales guys. Yeah. I can handle the ops piece. So yeah. who's going to sell? Cause I don't really want to go do that piece. Yeah. And who's, where's the money coming from? He's like, well, we have the investor. Let's get out there. And we'll figure out the sales piece if we can secure the capital. So I caught a red eye, flew out to Vegas. That's where I met my investor. Mm -hmm. um, he's like one of the largest McDonald's franchisees in the West of the Mississippi. Um, he's up to like 75 or 80 locations now. That's crazy. Just crushing, but we sat down and I literally whipped out. We were at, at Planet Hollywood in Vegas, and I whipped out a computer like at the steakhouse and <laughs> turned it on the, the table and was like, "Here's the business model." Showed it to him, and he was like, "Holy cow! Like, let's do it. How much money do you need? How, here's how this is gonna work. How do I get paid back? What's the equity split look like? Who's gonna sell?" Now that originally there was five owners, mm -hmm. five of us that started the company. Um, we're down to, to three owners at this point. Mm -hmm. And so we've had some exits along the way, but, um, yeah, I mean, we launched in 2017. Um, we hit the top 100 in 2020. Wow. 
And so top 100, PCT top 100, like ranks the top 100 pest control companies in the in like all the North nation. America. Uh-huh. So Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. And we're number 64. That's now great. In the, the top 100. We had a partial exit last year, sold mm-hmm. off our Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, and Greenville, South Carolina mm-hmm. locations. So now we're operating just in Atlanta. So you're part of your first exit. Yep. So it went through that whole process and went through that learning curve of that was good, right? private equity and LOIs and understanding EBITDA and all the other things that we were never looking at. Mm-hmm. Um, but learned a lot and have shifted a lot of things in the business this last Because now you know how to months. scale to sell. Yes. Yeah. Scaling and making money are one thing, but scaling and making money to sell are a whole other thing. Yes. Right? Because they're the buyer. Someone else is the buyer, and they know what they want. Well, and the other thing that's happened in the pest control space, and I don't, I'm not sure about the other door-to-door verticals, but uh-huh. in pest control specifically, marketing deals are an important part of, like, limiting a company's exposure. You know, what a marketing deal is, let's say I'd recruited you to sell for us, uh-huh. and I'm paying you, call it 70%. Mm-hmm. And you go recruit other people to sell underneath you that you're training, that you're mm-hmm. responsible for. Mm-hmm. Whatever you pay them is up to you, but it comes from that flat 70% right. piece. There's some other companies that kind of shifted that, like, oh, marketing deals are bad. It's really, really bad. But those marketing deal companies, if you owned a marketing company and came to Anthem and said, hey, I want to sell for you, Mm -hmm. you'd be on a marketing deal. Right. So the marketing deal companies are telling everyone marketing deals are bad, but that's how they get paid. Mm. And so, and then they've standardized the pay for everybody else. But all that really means is they're taking advantage of the first-year rookies who don't sell very high numbers. That's right. They pay them really, really low. Yep. And they end up keeping a really nice margin for themselves. That's and right. So it's, what it's done is soured the business a little bit because they don't have ownership in the business. So they're really, really pushy. It's all about commission dollars. They're not long-term. They're season by season. And so it's, it's made my appetite to grow the business strictly through door-to-door it really was a light bulb for me that I need to be a little more like a standard company. Mm, I like that. Do some more online ads and focus on our reputation and make yeah. sure our retention is improving, not re- declining. Facts. That we're paying our people better, that we're using the right products. You know, just focus on the right things rather yeah. than just, we were really like a, we were a sales company pretending to be a door-to-door pest control business mm-hmm. rather than a pest control business that utilizes door-to-door to mm. help sell. It's totally different. And that's a very different mindset. And so as we've made that transition over the last year, there's there's ebbs and flows to those types of decisions in business. Um, and I've taken – one of the things about me is I've, I've taken some of the experience that I've learned through all these different things that I've done, and I, I now own multiple businesses. We have mm-hmm. you know a supplement business. I have a construction business. I have a farm that we're invested in. We have – You're like the jack of all trades. We have a lot of stuff. Like but all those things, things came from you making money in sales. But it all came from door-to-door sales. And That's right. You know Mastering what I mean? that skill. You know, you got 10 businesses. You wouldn't have any business if it wasn't for sales. 100%. Yeah. And, and, you, and you've, you've sold. You've built. You've sold. You still, you know, are, are in this space, right? Yep. You have a big team. You guys yeah, said we you're have 64 a, in the nation. Yeah, we were up to we, – at one point, we had about 200 sales guys. We're, we're – we're much smaller now. We have about 40 mm-hmm. sales guys, but we're all of our guys are really hungry for growth and want to yeah. go grow. And well, 40 of the right people are better than 400 of the wrong people. 100. percent Yeah, I, I I know a lot of solar teams or door to door teams or whatever, and they have a thousand people. That doesn't mean they're doing more deals in a company with a hundred. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, like the, the numbers. No, we've got and, killers. And the scoreboard. Like, Anthem is known for producing high caliber guys, and that's great. Um, we've had I think seven door to door golden. Sam Taggart has his uh, mm-hmm. door-to-door con up in Salt Lake, and yep. um, I think we've had seven Golden Door winners now, which is more than it's big. more than anybody else who actually owns a door-to-door pest control company. There's yeah. marketing companies that have more guys, but not people that actually own a business. I love that. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been a ride. It's been fun, um, but now we're at a, a phase of the business where we're we're really focusing on traditional growth and traditional marketing and. This year, we'll do about 50% of our growth from door-to-door and about 50% from online ads and referrals and traditional marketing. We've opened up Termite, mm-hmm. um, which has been good. We've all already done over a million bucks in Termite in Atlanta this year. Um, and we're looking now at uh, a couple other ancillary services. So like doing add-ons. Insulation like that has uh-huh. pesticide inside of it and then encapsulations. So crawl spaces, moisture barrier protection for homes. That's great. Um, um, what what so, are some things? Okay, so me and you started together a year and a half ago. Yep. Right. 
Um, why, when you're doing well, why do you reach out for coaching? That's a question like people ask. Why? And then like, what has it been like since we've been together? What are some things that have changed? But but why why choose it? Because a lot of people are doing really good right now. And they're like, oh, I'm good. One thing I laugh about with you, Andy, is I like, I just want to be very, very real for a second. Like, because you changed my life in a couple ways. I met you at uh, Ultimate Closer Summit in Vegas. Mm-hmm. April of 2023, right? Yeah. And so you're up on the stage. Something you're kind of known for, at least within the Brotherhood group, is that when you're speaking to any of us, you're speaking to all of us. Yeah. And that we always find a way to kind of internalize your comments. But you were just really, really raw. And you you were on the stage and you said something to the effect of, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. And I was at 395 pounds. Mm. I kind of let myself go. Was that really where you were? Yeah. I forgot about that. I was there with Austin Mazur, our corporate trainer, had, had convinced me to go out to this training with him. I didn't want to go. Mm-hmm. I was like, at that point, I was just like out of it. I was, I, at that, fo- that point, I was focused on balance in my life. I need to have more balance. I've missed my kids. You know, my oldest two kids, I didn't spend a lot of time with them. I was building the business. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I need to have more time with my kids. I can't do that. I got to have time with my kids. Mm-hmm. What I've now focused on is not balance, but it's harmony. Mm-hmm. I think there's a really unique difference between the two words. Balance is where you're trying to get everything to, you know, everything up to 100%. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, um, and you may, you may think of this a little differently, but this is how, for me, how I was able to kind of yeah. move the needle, which is how I compartmentalized it. When I'm at work now, I'm at work, and it's 100% at work. And when I'm at home, I'm at home, and I'm 100% at home. Yeah. My phone rings, I can still shut it off, and I can go take this little attention piece. But when I come back, it's, you know, I'm... It's it's better for me to kind of car- compartmentalize my day. Just wherever you are, you're there. there. To be present. Like, wherever right. your feet are, be there. Super important, guys. If you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Me? Yeah. Like, meet me. Like, actually, like, hey, how are you doing? And then meet me, and then hate me. I've had people that I've said something that they're like, man, screw that guy. Well, because honestly, dude, I've had people tell me the truth before, and I don't like it. Yeah. I don't, it's, not, it's not what I wanted to hear. It's what I needed to hear, but I didn't want to hear it. So I was like, screw you, go eat shit, you know? And so like, um, we just want everybody to grow so we don't have any filter. And so we just tell the truth because all change starts with honesty and the truth. But that's really, everybody, there's like, there's a time in everyone's life where they're going to want to hear the truth. And it's just like, sometimes they just don't want to hear it. And so if you say it when they don't want to hear it, there's going to be hate. But there'll be a time where everybody goes, no, 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 no. Like, I need my health. But if somebody doesn't care about it at that time, when I'm talking about health, it just goes in one or out the other, and they're like, screw that guy. That guy can eat shit. I didn't come here to learn about health. I came here to learn about cells. And yeah. they don't understand that more cells comes, the more you like yourself, the healthier you are. Build the man to do the thing, not teach the thing when you're not the man. Yeah, well, and that's where we were going with that. You, you'd ask me, like, from where when we met, like, what kind of happened. So, yeah, so you're 395. You, 395, you said, hey, like, if you don't have your health, you're not, you don't have anything. Like, you're just... You know, you're, you got a, you got, you got a Lamborghini without fuel. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, what do you have? Why do you have a Lambo? So you what can't happened? Put fuel in it. So I was sitting at the conference and I text my wife, and I literally just said, "E fuck enough." Like I'm going to be different. I'm going to be better. Now have I lived up to that every yeah. day, twenty four seven? But you have lived up to that. What are you waiting right no, now? No, I, I, I have. I'm at three oh five right now. I got yeah. down to two seventy. Yeah, you lost hundred pounds. Back up to three fifteen. I'm coming back down, but. I'd lost 100 pounds, basically, and, and I feel incredible um, from where I was, but I'm still, yeah. I'm still 305 pounds, right? So I still got another yeah. 100 pounds to well, go. Well, you're on the next phase now. But yeah, that just, phase had to happen to get to this phase. Yes. I mean, but that's incredible. To losing 100 pounds, I mean, that's – Yeah, no. It's everyone, hard to believe, Everyone honestly. who saw me during the building of Anthem and, and during that process and sees me now, they're like, holy crap. And I'm still like – I don't have the confidence where I want to be. I don't have, like, mm-hmm. I'm better. You're seeing this next thing, and they're but like, I already job know, in. I already know, like, you, you know, know the three going. check boxes that I have. You always talk about version 3.0. I'm like, mm-hmm. version 1.0 is done. 
version 2.0 starting, right? Mm -hmm. And I still got another one after this, I know, to like, right. hold it all together and That's bind right. everything right. into concrete. But, um, yeah, like, it, it was that text to her was the first step and just saying, hey, like, I need your help to, to grant me the ability to go put myself first. Because mm -hmm. if I don't put myself first, I can never show up for you the way I need to. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling a lot of pressure, I think, from her of – and not necessarily even from her, but I was putting pressure on myself to be more present. And I don't need to go to the gym because I need to be here, like watching TV with my family. Like, no, my ass needs to be at the gym. And so I'm like, I'll just take the kids to the gym with me. Mm. I'll start doing stuff with them. We'll go mm. on a hike together. We'll mm. go walk the dog together. We'll go do this. We'll go do that. And so yeah. we started just getting more active as a family. And that changed everything. Wow. Like the relationship I have with my kids right now is like, I haven't talked to you about this, but like, bro, it's like incredible. That's awesome. Um, yeah, That's the, priceless. Yeah. The pride that came from that change, like, alone has been worth every dollar, right, that, that was spent thus far. That's incredible. On trainings and coming how, out here. And, how old are your kids? See, I've got a big spread. We did it, like, the non-traditional okay. Mormon way, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Mormon, but we've got a 16-year-old, a 12-year-old girl, 16-year-old mm -hmm. boy, 12-year-old girl. Uh, my My... Third boy just or my second boy turned nine last week, mm -hmm. and then I have a four year old. Oh wow! So it's well, that's like good. Man, sixteen straight babies. years of school and high school experiences. <laughs> it's that's gonna cool. be a long run. Yeah, but it's good. Like every kid has a different, you know, their own four years in high school and their own experience and their own stuff. And mom and dad are in a different place at each one of those things too. Yeah, and we're and that's the other thing. Like that, I think that was the other piece is that I realized I had kind of fallen out of love with myself. Mm -hmm. Right over the over the course of my career, but in a marriage, like you really have to recreate yourself consistently, and you have to continue to fall in love with that, mm -hmm. with your spouse and with yourself again. That's right. And if that's not happening a lot of times, that's why we have a fifty percent divorce rate in the states. Mm -hmm. Is it's like people aren't falling back in love with themselves; they're not yeah. holding themselves accountable. And of all, even my friends, like I think sixty percent of my close friends that I grew up with in high school have been through a divorce. Mm -hmm. Um. Or, or should. Well, and, well, and, well and, that, and that was never intended. Yeah. But, but what happened is they just no, forgot they, who they were. 100%. Yeah. Like it, they all should still be married. All of them still loved their spouse. They just yeah. didn't put in the work in the right time. So I was at a place where I was like, oh, crap. Like, I'm doing all the things that are leading this way, mm -hmm. but I want what's over here. Mm -hmm. So I had to take a hard pivot and then start working towards what was important. Mm, that's good. And so it's that's what I've been doing, what I've been focused on, and... Um, yeah, that, that part of my life is, that's amazing. You and your wife day. relationship way better. So much better. Yep. So you, your kids, and then, you know, obviously your own personal relationship is on fire, right? You yeah. Know, well, and the other, the other piece was obviously we all struggle with certain things, right? And so mm -hmm. I, I had always struggled with, with certain addictions and, and alcohol was one of them. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't ever like the go get drunk and get wasted type of guy, but I, I was like struggled knock, with knock the edge off, take, take two or three beers and whatever. And I was hiding that from her. I was still showing up, still doing all the other things, but I was hiding that. And, mm -hmm. um, I'd come out to you the first time for the, I don't remember when I came out to Scottsdale the first time, mm -hmm. but that was when I was like, okay, I need to like stop doing that crap. And like, I was like just recognizing the things that needed to get changed, right? Mm -hmm. And I was always just de-stressing. That's how I looked at it. It was just a tool to de-stress. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, going to the gym now does this. It's actually better than the alcohol, right? Yeah, like, it is better. Well, you face it. Yeah, and you get to fight that guy. Yeah, or that. Well, even today, you were taking me through a workout this morning, and and you kept saying, "Kill, kill that guy!" Like you got to yeah. kill him off. Yeah, and it's how it is. Like you have to keep fighting your your demons. But it's been a year now since I've had a had a drink and. You know, that's been awesome. That's um, cool, dude. To not have to Well, do it's life-changing. Number one, your children are going to get the best example, right? Yeah. I mean, they're getting another version of you. The 100-pound heavier you, that guy wasn't motivating anybody. That yeah. guy was providing. That guy was creating a financial fence around his family. But you weren't, you weren't really going to do anything with anybody. And that's what I want people to know is that, like, that's the side of life that actually matters more than the financial fence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, if you look at my, like the accomplishments from a financial standpoint, the life I live, mm -hmm. most people think I have it all. Yeah. Right? Well, cause like, most people judge success by economics. Yeah. Well, that's the hard part is that most guys go into sales, you know, or, or, or even your sales guys, mm -hmm. you know, my sales guys, it's all mm -hmm. about what car, what watch, what clothing, what, like all the flex things like, yes, 
we all work. We all want to have nice things. Yeah. You have nice. You have a beautiful home. We've been yeah. in your house. Yeah. It's great. I have a beautiful home. I love mm -hmm. my. I love my home. Yeah. I, I saw your shit. You're building. It's crazy. It's nice. Like I love it. Yeah. But that's like. That's if, not first. That's not first. Yeah. Like, if it, it, it can be first, if you're doing it first, that's wrong. Yeah. And that's, well, that's well, you'll burn out if that's first. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, those things they get old after a while. Yeah. Right, like when I buy a new car, like I bought my wife a Ferrari, right? For for you pull out of the damn dealership, you're like, that's it, that's what this feels well, like. Well, it was like, dude, this is gonna be so cool, like this is awesome, and she was super excited. And then we went to dinner, we went home, and then a week later, it's in the garage, and it's like, honestly, like we usually get in another car. Yeah, it's like so, like it's like it's it, a tax strategy at this point for me. Yeah, like, I love those things, but it's like I gotta, I gotta spend, I gotta lower my taxable income somehow. So. Why do I have this and this and this? Well, I have to play the game that the government has given us to play. So yeah, but it doesn't do anything for your heart. No, and I think it doesn't that make you a better person. Yeah, yeah, and the fulfilled stuff you always talked about. You said the reason why you like being here is because everybody's trying to do the right thing. Our intentions. Um, the number one goal is to try to leave someone better off than when you found them. Uh, take someone through an experience that they can take back home to their family. Yeah. You know, their team, their kids, their wife, themselves, right? Uh, a new way to live, a new routine, a, ru a new routine to run. Um, I always say, like, if the life you have now is because of the, the play that you're running right now. And so if you want a new life, well, you got to run a new play. And also, you can't run a new play if you're not going to become a new man. So there's like two things. We got to yeah. become a new man and then we got to, or a new woman, and then we got to run a new play. And the deal is, is that it's not like we're giving up the old play. We're just running a better play. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We're maybe waking up earlier. We're going to bed earlier. We're drinking water instead of alcohol. We're, you know, yeah. we're just we're just changing our intentions about why we're alive and what we're going to do when we're here. Something we say in all the businesses is leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing mm, less. Yeah. And if you're a 395-pound dude, you're not going to influence anybody. Like, I can't yell at my kid for eating donuts late at night or not to go to the gym when he's mm -hmm. playing football for the high school or not studying his stuff. Like if I'm out of whack, who like, I have no influence. I might have the right words, but they fall on deaf ears because. Well, back a long time ago and you know, we'll kind of we'll like, we'll end on this leadership deal. Um, and, and your story is amazing. What you're becoming is a really good leader. Um, you're 41. I'm 44. When we were younger, the people that we looked up to might be your PE teacher, might be your football coach, might be your neighbor, might be your mom or your dad. I mean, we didn't grow up on an iPhone. Could no. be a kid in the neighborhood. Um, now they have access to millions and millions and millions of pieces of content a day. They see everything. They see what they want. Me and you, I mean, when I worked out when I was younger, I had a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger on the wall. It was a poster. I wasn't watching a highlight reel. I couldn't go watch hours of a freaking workout content. Dude, I stared at a poster while I did curls. And I was like, I want to look like that poster. Like, remember that? Yeah. We'd buy a poster, and then we'd put it on the wall. Um, well, I ain't like that no more. And so now I think people will choose their mentor over money. People will choose someone else over their father to be their hero. Or back in the day, the fathers had a really good chance of their kids looking up to them. Where now, kids don't just look up to their parents. They actually don't even listen to their parents. They look up to everyone else because there's so many other things that are grabbing their attention. Hey there, sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals, and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not, there's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks, it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away. And here's the best part. Andy's playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans. Whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone in this playbook. So if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections, close more deals, and skyrocket your sales career, don't hesitate. Click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. 
So if you're going to be the leader of a company and those are going to be your people, or you're going to be the leader of your family or even leading your wife, you're going to need to stand out, be different. You're going to need to be the best example possible for everyone around you, or else you're not going to have impact on the people that you love. You may be the money maker. You may be the person that's providing for the family and they may love you for that, but they won't want to be like you. They don't look up to you. And to me, like, I'm not okay with that. And so later in life, as I got older at 39, I go, dude, I don't like who yeah, I, I am. Yeah, I want to be the hero. Yeah, like I'm the provider. But honestly, at the end of the day, like I can't crack in my wife's head and be like, what's her fantasy, right? But like I'm just envisioning like it wasn't me at 39 when I looked in the mirror because honestly, like I didn't even see me as that. And then I didn't even see my kids like wanting to be me. I mean, I got my kid over here. You know, he's like, what's for Halloween? He's dressing up, dressing up as like my wife painted him as the Hulk. And I'm like, I don't look anything like that. And I'm not saying I need to be a bodybuilder, but I'm like, I just, clearly he likes masculinity. And I'm, I'm over here eating trash all day long, trying to make more sales. And I'm just like, like, I'm glad I was in sales, but I wish someone could have said, Hey, let's get it all work-life integration, which is what you've decided to do. It's what I'm doing. And, you know, and it's a journey. So a year ago from now, you're down 100. And from next year to there, you're going to be sitting at 200. You're, it's going to happen. Yeah. And, dude, now on the back half 40 years of your life, you're a different man. Your wife has a different husband. Your kids have a different, you know. And, and by the way, like, when you get to that point where you said, hey, in a relationship, like, I can't just – you know, me and my wife fall more in love with each other. I also have to fall more in love with me too. I have to really like me because it's hard for me to be really loving to my wife when I don't like me. You know, sometimes my wife, and I'm just being like dead honest, I'll sit here and she's like, what's wrong? And you know, I'm, I got everything in the world that I want. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? And you know what it always is? I don't like me. I just feel like I need to give more to me. Like I'm giving all to my team. I'm giving all to my clients. I'm giving all to my kids. I'm giving everything to my wife to make sure that she's proud of me. But then I realize that I'm not giving to me. And in those times where I'm in any way, shape, or form feeling down on myself, it's because I truly skipped a day on investing in me. And I can feel it. And I always tell my wife, I'm like, I know this sounds really selfish. I'm like, I need to go to the gym. I'm like, I just need to spend a little bit of time with me. I need to put my headphones on. I don't need to talk to anybody. I just need to black out for an hour and I'll come right back and I'm good. And I know that sounds like a really silly thing, but at least I've learned that that's where I need to go. And you know what she does? She says, hey, get out of here. Yeah. And she's not mad at me. Like, fine, go. No, you can't do that because then I don't want to go. She's got, she says, no, I understand, Andy. I know how you operate get out of here. Yeah. And I know that she's really okay with it. And if you're falling in love with each other again, like that's been, a, I think a big change for my marriage specifically Facts. is that my wife has been supporting me in the changes. Mm, that's big. And it's huge Yeah, because without the support, like you wouldn't do it. If she's like, Hey, I want you to do this. Okay. Then I drop me and I'm, yeah, I'm going to show up for her. Dude, a woman can cut your legs off or she yeah. can make you a badass. Yeah. It's that. It's that easy. And, uh, and us men, we need a strong woman. I just had a meeting with my, with my team uh, yesterday. So I had all the spouses, right? So my whole company, I, I, we have 100 people that work here. I had every single person bring their spouse up, man or woman. It doesn't matter to me. Girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife. I don't care. I said, if you're in a relationship, I want them in this room, 5 p.m. The whole room over here is packed. I said, all right, everybody at the front that's a boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse to somebody who's a coach who works in my company. Everybody up front, I want to talk to you. I'm going to show you how to tell your partner who they are, what they're capable of, and what you freaking see in them. I'm going to do what I'm going to do here, but I can't go home with you guys. I can't go home. Everybody, I need you to take over when they get home. We don't just run high standards in the office. We don't just kick ass in the office. We kick ass at home too. And you guys must take over. I have spent as much time as I can with every coach in this company how to be the best in the world. And I'm pouring my heart into them. Now I need to talk to you. I need you to know what we're doing here so you can pick up the baton at home. And if you'll do this, you have no idea the person that we're going to make. Okay? So I need, so now we got work and we got home. 
And I'm going to take care of my job here, and I'm going to do my part here. And I'm going to make sure that your spouse, your boyfriend, your husband, your girlfriend, your wife, they do their part here. But when they go home, I need your help. Best meeting ever, dude. When everybody left, everybody went home that night, had a hard conversation, even started some fights with some of them. But guess what? The next morning, everybody came in. They're like, dude, we're on fire. We know what to do. We're, we're running harder than ever. Revenue was through the roof. Everybody's running hard. And now they know how to communicate, and the spouses understand how to take that baton when they get home. And, and not cut their legs off, but build that person to be strong. You know what I mean? Help, yeah. help hold the standard high. So, Yeah, standards are important. And I think the other thing we're missing a lot of times, at least that I've seen, I don't know what everyone's religion is yeah. or their belief, but, man, if you don't, if you don't have a relationship with your creator, mm. you're missing. Your relationship with God and is everything. I feel everything. like God, God needs good leaders right now mm -hmm. on earth because you sent a video to me the other day. Um, that literally highlighted like everything I wanted to talk about um, when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about. Like you hit on every single point, but one of them was like, everybody's asleep right now. Like we're asleep mm -hmm. at the will. And if we're not like attacking with vigor, um, the responsibilities that we have, like we're never going to accomplish the things that we're capable of accomplishing. Mm -hmm. One of the things in my first text I ever sent you, I said, my mantra has always been eliminate your potential. I've always looked at the word potential as a negative I was always told that as a kid, that you have such potential. Mm -hmm. If you just do things right, you'd, you'd have such potential. And I was, a, I was a good kid. I had good grades. I played sports. I was always like, I was never like a starting quarterback, all athlete, but I was like a consistent guy that would score touchdowns. And, you know, yeah. I was always consistent. I was always showing up. I was always part of the team. Um, but everyone was always like, man, like you should be leading the team. You mm. should be, you should have the captain badge on your shoulder. I had coaches tell me that forever. Like, mm -hmm. you're a captain, you just don't act like it. Like, you have such potential. And so I've always used the word potential as, like, this negative thing. And I think if we realize there's, there's some video out there that, that talks about if we only realize how, like, who we actually are, right? If we knew we were the son of God, mm -hmm. right? And we were able to inherit his kingdom and inherit his powers and inherit, like, his capacity. You'd go psycho. Like, but we are. Yeah, we are. We are. And so, like, why aren't we, you know, if, if you're watching this and you're thinking, like, I, there's some things I want to change, but I haven't, like, what do I need to do to change? You already know what you need to do to change. You just have to change. Mm. Right? You have to snap. Like and it's a snap. It's a decision. It's a and quick. as soon as you make that cut, like, I'm coaching my son's nine-year-old team. And they're, we're doing this little cut drill, right, where you're running from cone to cone. And baseball season just ended. So all the boys are running around the cones, like, rounding the cones. I'm like, no, it's a, we're not rounding anything. We're not taking easy corners. It's a cut. You have to put a cut step in and like jolt the other direction. Yeah. It's harder that way. If you had an, if, if, if you were in Italy and all these, all these uh, volcanoes are going off, right? If one's blowing up by you, you're not like running around, like you're running the other direction. Mm -hmm. And that's how we should be pursuing our goals. Like we should be pursuing them with intention, mm -hmm. with veracity. Mm -hmm. um, but we, it's hard we make it hard. We tell ourselves it's hard to do that, but it's actually like it's just a decision. Mm -hmm. um, and Love I'm not that. living. And I'm not living that way every day, right? But I recognize that I can. Yeah, and we are. And I think that's the potential piece that like we have to eliminate our potential in life. Yeah. Um, and just make a all decision. Of us, and that's and do it. how we treat our spouse, how we treat our kids, the time we're spending with them. And it's not just time. Like for me, like I'd rather not watch a movie with my kids. I'd rather take them on a hike. Mm -hmm. Me too. You know, yeah, because like, you're really present instead of being zoned. You're out. actually there. Like I hate that. If, I hate that we bought our kids phones. Like I, I took all. I'm the like phones, this close to taking phones away. Dude, I took all the phones away from all my kids, electronics yeah. and everything. I need to. I took them away a month and a half ago, and they hated me for the first week. And now they're closer to us than ever, and they don't even ask for them. Yeah. Like they've forgotten about them. They were zombies, dude. Yeah. Zombies. My four year old man is like. Yeah. More talented on the stupid thing. Yeah. I, I deleted all the social media off my phone. Um, I have a team that runs it. I deleted all of it. Listen, dude, it, 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 it was good for me for a period to understand and get out there. Now, I don't consume it. I create it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to use my own drugs. Yeah. I'm the drug dealer. Yeah, you're the drug dealer. Yeah. I love that. And you don't use your own shit. Yeah, you sell it. <laughs> or you go out of business. <laughs> okay. Right. So, anyways, um, I love it. Uh, guys, everybody watching this, Ben, if somebody wants to follow you on social media, I mean, if they do, they want to reach out to you, DM you, how do they find you? Sure. So, Instagram is the Ben Morgan, T H E E, Ben Morgan. Okay, two E's. And then uh, websites, uh, moregaincap.com. So, my last name is Morgan, mm -hmm. but it's moregaincap.com. We'll put it on website, here. And there's a bunch of stuff on there to 
the businesses I have and what I'm running and some of the things I'm launching. Okay. I love it. Guys, listen, man, I hope everybody got a lot of value out of today. There's a lot of gold nuggets. It really was. When I hear other people talk, I kind of work out my own life as they're talking about their life. And I just find one little piece. And that's it. Sometimes it's just one little piece of the puzzle. Okay. And he said a lot of stuff today. I'm sure there was one little piece to this whole puzzle. There's one little piece missing that you're like, that's it. I got it. And that's how you grow in life. 1% better every day. So Ben, love you, man. Same. Appreciate you, bro. Hey guys, kick ass and do a new podcast in the next, you know, year. And I want the one where you're 200 pounds and you're sitting here. I know it's going to happen. So we're talking about it in advance. I believe it. Um, Love you guys. Yeah, uh, it's happening. Um, We'll see you in the next video. Let's kill it, crush it. Have a blessed day. Let's go. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications. And then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. Yeah, the hell when you